JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, senior citizen fatally stabbed in Manchester, man in custody. A man has been taken into police custody following the stabbing death of a senior citizen in Tweedside, Manchester, on Sunday. The deceased has been identified as 65 year old security guard Fitzburn Patterson, otherwise called Major. Reports from the Spalling Police are that about 2 a.m. Patterson, the man, got involved in an altercation. During the dispute, the man allegedly used a knife to stab Patterson in the abdomen. Patterson was rushed to hospital where he succumbed to his injuries. The accused man's name is being withheld as the investigation is ongoing. Double murder rocks Olympic Gardens. A double murder rocked the volatile community of Olympic Gardens St. Andrews Sunday evening with a teenage boy among the victims. The teen and another man, who were both shot in the gun attack on Rodin Crescent, are yet to be identified. According to information received, residents heard explosions along the roadway and called the police. Upon the arrival of the lawmen, the two males were found suffering from gunshot wounds. Sections of Olympic Gardens and nearby waterhouse have been plagued by gang violence, which has claimed several lives since the start of the year. In March, the lead vocalist, for the legendary trio Mighty Diamonds, Tabby Diamond, was shot and killed on McKinley Crescent, also in Olympic Gardens. The 67-year-old musician, given name Donald Orlando Shaw, was among a group of people reportedly conversing along the roadway when they were attacked and shot at. Five among the group were hit and were rushed to hospital, where Shaw and Owen Beckford were pronounced dead and three others admitted with gunshot wounds. Gun seized in Kingston Man in custody. A man was taken into custody following the seizure of a Kamba .45 pistol on Brightner Avenue, Riverton City, Kingston 11 on Sunday, September 4. The Hunts Bay Police reported that about 10.05 a.m., a joint police military team was on patrol in the area when explosions were heard. The team responded and was greeted with gunfire. The man reportedly attempted to elude the team by jumping a fence. The gun fell from his grasp and was retrieved. He was subsequently arrested. No member of the security forces was injured. Education Minister saddened by deaths of three boys in Westmoreland fire. Minister of Education and Youth, Favel Williams, has expressed sadness at the deaths of the twin boys and their older brother in a fire in Springfield, Westmoreland, on the eve of the new academic school year. The boys, Jaden, Jordan, and Adriana Lang, were burnt beyond recognition in their home. They were all students of Sheffield Primary School in Westmoreland. Williams also expressed hope for their sister, who survived the ordeal and is now being treated at hospital. Our hearts mourn for the family, and I know that our agency, the Child Protection and Family Services Agency, would have been activated this morning. They have been activated, and they should be there already with the family to provide the necessary support, Williams said at Mountain View Primary School, doing a tour for the reopening of schools on Monday. It's never ever good to hear of tragedy and our children. It's a sad morning to wake up to that news. When all of us should be excited to be going back to school, we have to face that news this morning for our children who died in the fire and their sister is in hospital. We are praying and hoping that she will recover fully from all of this, she continued. She has committed to supporting the parents and family in this time of need in partnership with the CPFSA. It is reported that the four children, who live with their father in Spring Gardens, were left at home about 7.20 p.m. with a lit candle inside the five-apartment board and concrete dwelling. Residents saw fire coming from the house and alerted the Savlamar Fire Station. On their arrival, they discovered the house being consumed by fire, and after they managed to extinguish the blaze, the child remains of the three children were removed from the burnt rubble. The fourth child was also found with severe burns, was rushed to hospital by ambulance. Assistant superintendent in charge of the Westmoreland Fire Department, Dave Goldburn, said that they got the call about 7.50 p.m. and responded with two units, one from Negril and the other from Savlamar. Farm Fury over Hinsod housing plans. Agricultural interests have vigorously opposed the planned repurposing of 3,000 acres of prime farmlands in Hinsod, St. Catherine, for the development of housing solutions by investors, led by billionaire business mogul Michael Lee Chin. The resistance represents the latest episode of a philosophical tug-of-war 
between lobbyists keen to preserve arable land for Jamaica's food security and others who believe the housing boom should stretch to the southern corridor, which carries thousands of commuters from St. Catherine into the capital. President of the Jamaica Agricultural Society, Lenworth Fulton, has accused the Holness administration of speaking out of two sides of his mouth. While we are not against Mr. Leach in going into housing, they should find appropriate lands for housing investments. We cannot use arable agricultural lands with irrigation systems already in place to build houses, Fulton said in an interview. They came to us and we supported a food security drive to make Jamaica sufficient in food. This cannot be done without lands, Fulton stressed. The original mega farm concept floated two years ago was slated for the cultivation of onions, watermelons, carrots, alongside mango and sour sap orchards. Fulton has called for a give back of the Inswood farmlands for agriculture, counter proposing a swap of other property more suitable for housing development. Norman Scott, chairman of the St. Catherine Municipal Corporation, said that no change of use request has yet been submitted to the council for the Inswood lands in question. However, he suggested that it would not be unusual for landowners to circumvent the local authority. The first thing is to seek an objection letter from the corporation, and this was not done. However, we know that some have bypassed the local authority in the past, so I would not be surprised if it happens in this instance, Scott, mayor of Spanish Town, said, without giving further details. The supply deficit in Jamaica's housing market is stark, even if the government delivers on its pledge for 70,000 new homes in its five-year term, which started in 2020. Scott said that while he supports the push for housing, he strongly opposes the use of agricultural lands as a means to that end. He has also cautioned against investors capitalizing on undervalued government agricultural lands and transforming them into commercial entities. That is also a concern held by the parliamentary opposition, which said the land acquisition might unduly benefit private investors. It has called for the government to demand that Portland Holdings relinquish its claim to the Inswood lands and instead offer them other property. These disclosures must include an audit of all government-owned property within the Bernard Lodge area and adjoining areas, such as Inswood Village, where large acres of land were divested by SCJ Holdings leading up to the 2020 general elections. We need to find out how much land was divested and to whom, as well as the purpose which were bought and are being used, said opposition spokesman on agriculture, Lothan Cousins. The fate of Model Agricultural Production Limited which grows crops for local and overseas consumption on vast acreages of Inswood lands is uncertain. The company has invested 1.5 million US dollars in equipment, testing combination drip and sprinkler irrigation systems, as well as increasing materials and chemicals for land preparation to raise production levels. Meanwhile, agricultural workers employed to the company were restive on Saturday. Since we heard of the switch to housing, everybody worried. Right now, we don't know what to expect said Christopher Thompson, an agricultural worker. We were told that will be given 60 days off from work, he said. Jason Cargill, an irrigation supervisor, has expressed anxiety about the future. He warned that any preferential switch to housing over agriculture on the farmlands would be rejected by the people. Lindsay taxi operators protest route changes. Taxi operators in Lindsay, St. Catherine, have withdrawn their service today following changes in the routes to and from the town centre. The action resulted in scores of people being left stranded Monday morning. Commuters heading to Redwood, Geisel, Yorton and Charlemont were mostly affected. Previously, drivers would pick up passengers along King Street in both directions, but that road has now been turned into a one-way street. The drivers have described the rerouting by the authorities as dangerous. We need to be part of the reasoning, as if we took up the change, a whole heap of robbers are going one driver, Martin Lindo, said. When the rural township was visited, police personnel were observed manning various points. If they cooperate, I think that the one-way system will work, Inspector Maxine Thomas said. The police said they'll sustain their presence in the town until order returns to the area. Manager of the Lynn State Transportation Center, Christopher Angus, said if the taxi operators use the park, things would proceed smoother. The police said they'll sustain their presence in the town until order returns to the area. Manager of the Lindsay Transportation Center, Christopher Angus, said if the taxi operators use the park, things would proceed smoother. The park can accommodate 60 cars and 35 buses. 
Jamaica reports 127 new COVID-19 cases, one more death. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported 127 new COVID-19 cases on Sunday, September 4, bringing the infection total to 150,307. The new cases comprise 78 females and 48 males, with ages ranging from 1 month to 92 years. One new death was reported, bringing the death toll to 3,268. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew 35, St. Catherine 17, St. James 10, Clarendon 9, St. Thomas and St. Elizabeth 11 each, Manchester and St. Anne 10 each, St. Mary 9, Portland 6, Westmoreland 3, Hanover 1 and Trelawney 1. The deceased is an 86-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew. There were 83 recoveries in the last 24 hours, bringing the total to 97,095. Currently, 120 people are hospitalized, 47 of whom are moderately ill and 6 in critical condition. Jamaica's positivity rate for the latest round of testing is 20.3%. In sports news, Jack's on the hunt for Diamond League glory. The focus will be on Sharika Jackson on Wednesday and Thursday in Zurich in the grand finale of the Diamond League when individual winners will be crowned and get the opportunity to walk away with cash prizes and trophies. Several Jamaicans will be in action and Jackson, who won the 200 meters at the World Championships in Eugene, Oregon in July, when she also won the silver medal in the 100 meters, will be going for the double over the two days. It has been months of intense action and the winners of their respective events will also be given wildcard buys to the next year's World Championships in Budapest. Jackson leads all qualifiers in both the 100 and 200 meters with 35 and 23 points, respectively. In the 100 meters, Jackson has one win, three second place finishes and a third place, while in the half lap event, she finished with two wins and one second, with her only defeat being in door when she was beaten by Gabrielle Thomas from the United States. Jackson will be hoping to become the fifth female to score a Diamond League double in the same year and join the likes of countrywoman Chilean Fraser Price and Carmelita Jet of the U.S. with double success in the 100 and 200 meters, along with the USA's Alison Felix and Shawna Miller Weber of the Bahamas with success in the 200 and 400 meters. Jackson will be hoping to go all the way and capture the 30,000 U.S. dollars, along with the two trophies will get her campaign off on Thursday's second day of the meet when she contests the 100 meters at 1.23 p.m. Jamaica time and she'll return for the 200 meters just over an hour later at 2.31 p.m. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.